For example, uh, if you want to um, sandbox off a piece of code uh, that you want to run with lower privileges um, than uh, what the user normally has. So, for example, if, uh, you're not, if you don't trust that code or if that code is um, parsing uh, input that is untrusted that comes from either the network or a file or something like that, the, um, you might want to um, break that off into a separate process and uh, make sure that that process runs with as few privileges as, as possible. Um, so you can do uh, a number of different things with the create restrict to restricted token call, where you can um, uh, both prevent SIDs from granting access, so you're basically making certain SIDs in the list uh, restricted, which means that they uh, can only be used to deny access. So when you're walking the uh, access control entries in the, in the DACL, uh, for the resource that you've uh, requested access to, uh, it will basically skip all the uh, uh, access uh, granting uh, access control entries and only process the deny access control entries. Uh, you can also um, remove stuff from this list and create a smaller list. And uh, you can actually add stuff to that list as well that wasn't there from the start, which is very interesting. And it's uh, actually fortunate that you can because it... it um, it's the only way, actually, to um, deny access to certain system right resources for this um, sandbox process. So uh, when you've got a, uh, a token, for example, the primary token of your process, and you've restricted it, removed all the privileges that you uh, don't want to be there, you've perhaps added uh, or subtracted from the SID list, you can take that uh, restricted token and pass it in as the first parameter to create process as a user. And create process as user is normally used uh, by the system only to uh, create new processes. And it uh, assigns, make sure that uh, the primary token of the new process is assigned uh, accordingly. That's actually controlled by a uh, system privilege. So if you don't have the SE token privilege, you can't assign a new primary token to a new process or to any process. Um, but create process as a user called with a restricted token will actually allow you to start a new process with uh, an arbitrary token. As long as it's a restricted token of the primary token that's created from the primary token of the calling thread, or sorry, the calling process. So which means that it's a nice way for you to actually spawn off a new process uh, from your application that's uh, dropped all the privileges the user might have had. So, for example, on XP, if it was an admin user, you could drop the domain admins uh, group from the SID list. You could drop all the privileges that he might have been granted from the restricted token. And then start a new process with those lower privileges. So basically, uh, making sure that he doesn't have access to something that, uh, 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 that could compromise security. Um, so that's a very nice feature to have. It's basically the... Um, um, under, um, what, what's underpinning sandboxing in, in Windows is the restricted token. But there are other things, other resources that we need to, um, to um, uh, consider when uh, sandboxing, for example, untrusted code. So uh, one thing that's interesting to look at is the uh, GUI model. And the GUI model is built up of um, securable objects, objects with security descriptors. And they go from the user session, which is created at login. Um, and within a session, there can be one or more window stations. And by default, there's only one called window station zero, Winster zero. Uh, and this window station can, all window stations can contain one or more desktops. And by default, there are a couple of desktops created in the, in the uh, Winster, Winster zero instance. Um, for example, there's the interactive desktop that you get logged into, essentially. And there's also the uh, uh, logon desktop, which is where you enter your credentials at the login prompt, and also where you get sent to when you um, press Control or Delete. Um, now, processes belong to a window station, so they kind of map at that level. Uh, but threads can be assigned to different desktops uh, within that window station. And uh, the desktop object is kind of interesting because it's kind of the lowest security, uh, sorry, the lowest level um, securable object that we have in the GUI model, which means that 
Uh, the desktop contains all the GUI objects, all the windows on your desktop, uh, message queues for those windows, um, and all, all the other GUI elements. But within this desktop, there is no access control whatsoever. So basically, uh, two processes that have windows open on the same desktop uh, have a way of talking to each other without there being any security involved at all. So they can, uh, for example, post uh, messages to each other's message queues, and these messages can be quite nasty. Uh, if you uh, look up what's called a shatter attack, uh, you can see what happens when a process uh, posts messages to the message queue of a, another process that might have higher privileges. It can get it to do nasty stuff. Um, With the 2000 terminal server release, uh, there was a new concept introduced in the Windows security model which is called a job object. And the job object is basically uh, introduced to be able to set limits, resource limits on processes. So for example, in a terminal services environment, you have several users that log in um, and you want to set caps on, for example, CPU usage or memory usage so that one user wouldn't be able to um, hog system resources and degrade the experience of other, other system users. So uh, what Microsoft did was implement what's called a job object, which you can create and you can assign processes to it. Uh, and the job object can uh, set a number of different limits. So it can set limits, as I said, on CPU use, mem memory usage, runtime of application uh, to prohibit um, hung applications or runaway applications. It can prohibit access to uh, certain GUI objects um, uh, that are above the desktop level, such as the clipboard, and prohibit uh, access to sensitive APIs that might uh, uh, be used to compromise uh, other processes. You can use it also to uh, um, uh, prevent access to uh, new, granting new handles to um, UI objects of other processes, but that's not... Um, that doesn't give you very much. Um, uh, in Windows Vista, there were a couple of um, interesting developments. Uh, you've probably all heard of um, um, pr protected mode IE. Well, protected mode IE is basically uh, running the whole of Windows Internet Explorer in a somewhat sandbox mode. Uh, where the um, um, Windows, uh, sorry, the Internet Explorer process uh, has been prohibited from accessing, uh, writing to system resources, even though it's running as the, uh, um, the standard user that's logged in. So, for example, uh, if you were to subvert the uh, Internet Explorer process using uh, uh, exploiting a vulnerability, you wouldn't be able to write to the startup key in the registry, for example, or something like that. Uh, and you wouldn't be able to write um, executables to, to disk outside of a certain temporary internet folder, temporary internet files folder, or something like that. And this is uh, controlled by something, a new concept called mandatory integrity control. And uh, this is mandatory in such a way that it's uh, always checked when granting a, before granting access to uh, a new system resource. Um, and uh, it's implemented in such a way that there's a new access control entry in the system access control list, which is called a uh, mandatory label access control entry. And the mandatory label, uh, the SID, if you remember in the access control entry, uh, the SID in the mandatory label access control entry doesn't uh, identify a user or a group. It actually identifies what's called an integrity level. And this uh, integrity level is basically a, uh, um, a number from zero to whatever. And there are a number of different uh, default uh, assigned numbers with um, names such as low, medium, medium plus, uh, high, um, system, and so, so on. Um, and um, the type, oh sorry, the attributes in the uh, access control entry specify policy. Uh, that can be one of uh, no write up, no read up, or no execute up. In uh, Internet Explorer, uh, Protect Mode Internet Explorer, um, it only use, uh, uses the uh, 
uh, no right up um, policy, which means that um, this process running under a lower integrity level uh, cannot write to objects that have been uh, tagged with a higher security, uh, so higher integrity level uh, than low, which uh, is what in Internet Protect Mode Internet Explorer is running as. Um, so most system uh, resources are by default tagged with um, uh, the integrity level of medium. Rather, um, if there isn't an access control entry uh, with mandatory label in the system access control list or SACL4 in a specific um, resource, um, it will be interpreted as being of integrity level medium with the no read up policy, except for uh, processes which will be interpreted as integrity level medium with an, uh, no read up and no write up. Uh, sorry, uh, I got that wrong. No write-up, no read-up for processes. For every other object, it's no write-up, of course. Same as the, uh, uh, what I said earlier. Uh, and the um, reason why processes also have the no read-up policy is to uh, prevent a low-integrity process from uh, reading sensitive uh, memory from a higher-integrity level process, such as maybe uh, passwords stored in memory or something like that. Um, and anybody can set um, a lower integrity level on a uh, system resource. Anybody that can actually set uh, permissions on a resource can set a lower integrity level than they, they, uh, that process or thread themselves is running as. Uh, to actually raise the integrity level of uh, a resource or a process, you'd need a uh, specific uh, SE relabel re privilege uh, to do that. So this is something that can be used to strengthen the sandboxing of uh, your um, process that's running untrusted code, or rather parsing uh, untrusted input to make sure that if um, somebody were to gain execution within that process, uh, they wouldn't be able to, for example, write to system resources or whatever policy that you've uh, chosen to implement. Um, another thing that you probably all pretty familiar with at this point is user, act, uh, user account control, which was also introduced in Win Windows Vista. And uh, the idea with the uh, UAC, I'm not going to talk too much about this because uh, it's not really relevant to application security, more than that you need to be aware of it as an uh, application developer. The idea is that admin users before had always be basically logged in and had all their privileges, all of their uh, domain uh, admin groups and everything um, enabled in their access token. And as you might imagine, people were surfing the web as domain admin accounts and stuff like that. Home users were logging in as, dom as uh, local administrators and stuff like that. So that, that wasn't a very good idea uh, since um, any exploit in a web browser or email um, application or whatever could then use those um, privileges to take over the computer. So what Microsoft tried to do is uh, force third-party developers to uh, not assume that the user would have these admin privileges. So for example, not uh, assume like th that you're on Windows 95 or whatever and start writing configuration files in the program files directory and stuff like that, but actually <clears throat> use the user profile and the uh, H key current user um, type of the registry to